Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the 125th anniversary album of Soviet conductor Alexander Gok. Here it is. He was born in 1893, and his 125th anniversary, therefore, was 2018. And for some reason, this just showed up in my mailbox, and I don't know why. Um, the performances are, some of them anyway, are rather well known, but or known, I don't know how well known they are, but I want to go through it because I was listening to it, and it's so much fun in kind of a weird way. Gawk was a, one of the first conductors in the 30s of the Leningrad Symphony, um, not one of the first conductors of the orchestra, but I mean in the 30s. He was there for a few years. He trained people like Bravinsky and Svetlanov. I mean, he was very, very well known. Um, and, and he had an extensive discography. There were two 10-disc sets of his stuff that were licensed and released by Brilliant Classics. And I think they're still around, some of them, if you're curious. And some of the things in here are in there. Not all of it, but some of it. What you get on this disc, but the thing that's wonderful about it is it has no Russian music. And it's always fun to hear, you know, Russian people do other things. I mean, they can do more. I mean, they can, and they do. We get Strauss's Till Eulen Spiegel's Merry Pranks, the Debussy Dances for Harp and String Orchestra, The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Duca, Liszt's Fantasy on Motives from Beethoven's the Ruins of Athens for piano and orchestra. When was the last time you heard that? Oh my goodness. I mean, it goes I mean, endlessly, but still. And then uh, on disc two, it's just Liszt's Faust Symphony in the version without the chorus at the end, which is probably a good thing, you know, all things considered. Now, these were recorded um, from 1958 to 1970, and they all sound rather rather dismal in different ways. I mean, they're clear enough. You hear what's going on. It's not, it's, it's boxy, studio-bound Russian, not great sonics from the period. Um, and let's see, it's with the Moscow Radio Symphony Orchestra. Now, some of these, that became the USSR State Symphony Orchestra eventually. So, so when you see these performances, sometimes you see them with different orchestras, but it's all the same orchestra actually. Um, and as to the performances, well, <clears throat> Till Eulenspiegel, it's very quick. Um, it's rhythmically a little unsteady in places. Uh, the solo horn is, it, well, it's that Russian solo horn sound, which is watery and, and it's not Viennese, let's put it that way. Uh, it's an exciting performance, a fun performance. Um, and, and really strange sounding. I mean, some of the balances are just, I, I don't even know how to describe it. You're not going to recognize bits. I mean, it's really kind of amazing. You don't hear the grosser ratcha, the big ratchet when Elaine Spiegel goes running through the, the market. There's something in there sort of cranking along, but it's not a large ratchet part, that's for sure. It's strange. What can I tell you? Then we have the DBC Dances for Harp and Orchestra played oh my goodness by vera dulova who uses her her samovar g46 nuclear civil defense harp let me tell you this harp is a sub harp i mean it's way up front you barely hear the strings the tempos are very very peculiar transitions are are shall we say um well, they just run through it. They blast through it like, you know, a, a, a tank approaching Kiev. I mean, of course, Dolova here, this harpist, I mean, she's, 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 a, she's a beast. I mean, she has, you know, amazing calluses on her fingers, which were produced from her day job, which was hand twisting barbed wire at a Soviet munitions factory. I mean, this is not your impressionistic DVC. And then we have the Saucer's Apprentice. This is terrific, I have to say. Again, there are some rhythmic baubles and things. It's a very difficult piece to play. It's very, very, very complicated and hard to count. But the cool thing about this is that if you ever thought that the Saucer's Apprentice was like a jolly Mickey Mouse Disney type cartoon, think again. This one is terrifying. I mean, it is scary. 
violent and expressionistic. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a hallucinatory phantasmagoria of terror. I loved it. Oh, it was wonderful. Now, the fantasy on Motives from the Ruins of Athens is a little jeu d'esprit. And, and that's performed here by Grigory Ginsberg, um, and, and rather well. And it's 12 minutes long and just light and fluffy, and that's that. Then we get the Faust Symphony without the chorus. Now, the truth of the matter is, if I had my choice, I would rather have the chorus. Why? Because the original ending without the chorus is just terrible. It's an anticlimax. It just, it sort of all of a sudden turns to the major and has a few cymbal crashes and it stops. Um, and the chorus does balance it out, silly though it may be. Um, and it is kind of, but that's okay. But the reason to listen to this Faust Symphony, and I think you should, first of all, is it, it's, it's, it's a, an exciting performance above all. Um, not subtle, not terribly well recorded, but better recorded than a lot of this stuff. Um, but it's Mephistopheles, the finale. They just go insane. And frankly, that's what has to happen. I mean, there's no excuse for not doing it that way. And it's just unbelievably thrilling. It really is. So this little two disc set is very nicely packaged for a Melodia product. It comes this, you get the booklet, it's translated, and then you have it opens this way, which is really rather nifty. I mean, convenient and sturdy, even though it's cardboard. I enjoyed this. I, you know, it, 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 was, it, was, it was different. And for those of us who listen just because we want to hear things that are different, this is different. So there you go, Alexander Glock, 125 years, five years ago. Um, if this is still around, you may want to try it or you can get these performances in, in some format, some way. He was a very good conductor. I mean, and Russian orchestras in those days sounded like Russian orchestras, which is different from anything else that we hear now. And the engineering made them sound even more like Russian orchestras, unfortunately. But that's the way it went. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.